Welcome to USAID's Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. I'm your producer, Nika Larian. 30 to 40% of the food that is produced is either lost or wasted, contributing to a global food crisis with over 800 million going to bed hungry. Listen on as USAID experts speak with researchers and development professionals to explore solutions to this critical issue that demands a kitchen sink approach. When it comes to climate, food security, and food system sustainability, we have no time to waste. Thanks for tuning in into USAID Kitchen Sink, a food loss and waste podcast. My name is Ahmed Kablan, Senior Science Advisor with USAID RFS Food Safety Division and a co-lead for food loss and waste effort at USAID. Today, I will be speaking with Pete Pearson, Flow Global and Initiative Lead at WWF. We will be discussing how Flow can serve as a catalyst for creating sustainable and resilient food system. Welcome, Pete. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Ahmed. Uh, my name is Pete Pearson. And again, I'm, I'm our global lead for food loss and waste at World Wildlife Fund. Uh, I've been with WWF for about eight years now and reside in our Washington, D.C. office. Really happy to be here. Thank you for agreeing to speak with us. Can you share why WWF is focusing on food system and food loss and waste? Uh, of course. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I work as part of our global team on a practice we call our food and freshwater practice. And when you look at WWF's core mission, um, we are completely invested in the business of biodiversity. Uh, basically, how do you create and, and instill that a planet in the future and today is balanced for people and for nature? Now, if you look at the greatest threats to nature, it's really, it's the loss of habitat. It's the loss of space that animals and nature can thrive within. And the number one driver of that loss of habitat, that loss of nature, comes at the hand of agriculture, right? It's, it's food, it's the commodities that we make from agriculture. It's everything that goes into things like the food system that is the number one threat to nature. And so when we look at that system, it is really critically important that we get this correct, that we are able to meet the needs of people on a growing planet, but also save space and save room for nature. And, and when we look at you know, the food system, reducing food loss and waste is one of those major drivers for uh, how we have to approach a planet where you just, you can't cut down forests and chew up grasslands forever, right? Sooner or later that runs out and we've got to make space for nature by making things more efficient. Thank you, Pete, for making these links between food loss and waste and nature and natural habitat and conservation. Next, I would like to uh, ask you if you could, could you explain the reach and breadth of the global WWF network and how this facilitates your work on food loss and waste? Of course, yeah. <laughs> when you look at the WWF network, so we are comprised of around 80 different offices worldwide. Um, each of those offices runs somewhat independently, right? We have a core set of practices like our food and our freshwater practices that help to guide the strategies for how all of our offices work together. And so what we've been doing um, over the last couple of years is really trying to create a collaborative network of offices that work on issues like food loss and waste. And it's really amazing when you see this happening because <clears throat> you know all of the country offices, a lot of times they have a great partnership with, let's say the, the food retailer that is in that country. Um, and, and a lot of this is, is born from previous partnership work that we've done on things like sustainable uh, seafood, sustainable fisheries. And so when we have this network of partners, it really creates this amazing landscape from which we can do work. And so for the food loss and waste program, we've basically been working with offices in every continent. 
from China and our Asian offices to offices in Africa to offices in Latin America. And we have at the moment about 20 different network offices engaged on food loss and waste work. As part of that, we've also done a whole series of innovation projects uh, where you know, we will work with a community in a fishery or we will work with hotels in Africa and try and looking at how do we do interventions on reducing loss and waste. And so it's really pretty amazing to have really this family of offices all over the world where we can help to spur along innovation and kick up projects with both private sector partners and also governments. Thank you, Bid. That's a rich network, and I'm sure it enables you to collect a lot of data and achieve results at uh, scale. Um, please share how food loss and waste is an important catalyst for sustainable food systems. Well, <clears throat> in terms of food loss and waste and its ability to be a catalyst for food systems, I think what it does is it forces us to realize and measure food system impact on the planet. So you'll often hear quotes about the, the, the amount of food waste that's estimated globally. It's around 30 to 40% of all the food we produce is lost or wasted on the planet. That is a massive number. And when you hear that number, when you hear how much is lost or wasted, you then start to calculate the impact that that wasted food has on the planet not just in terms of what happens when you dispose of it, right? That we, we know that when we put organic matter in landfills, that creates methane emissions. We can measure that, we can see that. But we can also start to calculate other things like the amount of water that went into producing that food, right? 70% of all of our fresh water withdrawals go into food production. So we waste that water when we waste food. You also have greenhouse gas emissions, you have land use, all of those things you can start to calculate and understand really the, the demands that we, that we put on the planet. And, and those, are, those are inputs that we put into the food system. I think looking at loss and waste helps us realize that. It helps us to really hone in on what the impacts of the food system are. And they show us that just by trying to make things more efficient, um, we can, in fact, uh, have higher utilization and we can have a more sustainable future. And this isn't just about terrestrial or land-based systems. It's also about fisheries and about oceans and how we use all of the resources when we harvest fish from the ocean, right? Let's make better use of those resources and make sure that nothing is lost or wasted. Thank you, Pete. Indeed, a food loss and waste uh, carry a cascade of negative impact on the on nature, environment, and natural resources. Talking about uh, food, uh, <clears throat> talking about food loss and waste and circular economy, what are the top two to three things you would like to see globally to move forward a circular food economy? Thanks, Ahmed. Uh, in terms of my wish list, like the top two or three things that I would love to see happen, I think first and foremost is a recognition that food and organic material is not a waste. It's not something that has zero value. And so I would love to see every country on this planet move towards policy and regulations that take food and organic material out of the trash out of the waste stream. When you do that, when you force uh, the, the business community, when you force populations to take that out of the trash, you create a whole new marketplace for organic material and you start to realize the value that you can derive from that, the profitability you can derive from that. I think if, if we look at the current statistics, they are not good. I think it's around 10 to 12% of all the organic material is, is composted or it's put into a circular economy worldwide. That means that almost 90% of all that organic material or waste is going into landfills. It's going into holes in the ground where it creates another problem of methane emissions. 
we've got to move that. We've got to change that. When we move into a circular economy, we can create profitability where that organic material becomes a value either for soils, for animal feed, for human consumption. Uh, there's so many possibilities, but you have to take it out of the trash. Um, the second thing is we need to move governments towards making commitments to food waste reduction as part of climate goals, as part of climate commitments. Um, last year at the climate summit in Egypt, it was reported that only 20% of, of governments or 20% of the global population in terms of government reputation, rep, representation has included food loss and waste in their nationally determined commitments. We've got to move that number up too. We need to see all governments pledging support for food loss and waste reduction, not only as part of climate, but also as part of food sovereignty and food security. Um, th th this is a big deal. And I think when you, when you start to see those commitments from governments, then you start to see action on how you can make it more of a, a regulatory and a circular economy move. But then you start seeing public and private sector working together on how do you invest in it? How do you make these changes happen? Uh, so I, I think those are the two things on my wish list for sure, if I could make happen. And to be honest, we need to have this happen fast. It, if I'm, still talking about this 10 years from now, we are way too late. I mean, this is something that I think could happen within the next five years where you could really start to see country level and government adoption of these, uh, these climate goals and food waste reduction and moving towards a circular economy that's profitable. These are things that need to happen within the next decade. Indeed, thank you, Beat, for uh, sharing these thoughts. And indeed, we, I believe in terms of acting on food loss and waste and establishing policies. Uh, uh, I mean, I agree with your wish list. I think it is a great thing to take it out of the trash and think about linking to climate initiatives. And I, 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 I hope that we are not too late to take action. Uh, I hope we will not get to 10 years or not, uh, and where we're still talking about uh, taking the next step to address food loss and waste as an action, as we call it at USAID of a triple win, it's good for the environment, good for the nutrition, and good for economic development. Thank you for joining us on the uh, podcast today, and appreciate uh, your time. Over. Thank you for tuning in to USAID's Kitchen Sink. This podcast was produced by Nika Larian and is organized by the USAID Food Loss and Waste Community of Practice co-chairs, Ahmed Kablan and Ann Vaughn. Additional thanks goes to Feed the Future, the U.S. government's global food security initiative, and the USAID Center for Nutrition.